Hey guys, it's the Awesome Cast, number 98, live in Pittsburgh, PA. I am Mike Sorg of Sorgatron.com, and behind me is Rob De La Creta. How are you doing tonight, Rob? Good, I have beer. You, you have beer? I thought you were holding your microphone up again. I can hold my microphone. No, you don't have beer. to. Oh, there we go. There we go. <laughs> Still want to drink the wrong one. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I've done that before. I've done that before. Uh, you, when you're on stage and you have your water and you have your cordless mic, you forget which hand is which. Sometimes, you know. So, uh, so how you doing, Rob? I'm good. I uh, <clears throat> I'm currently not working any working on any gigantic projects, just small, interesting ones to keep uh, keep us busy. So I'm um, trying to sleep, still trying to recover from all my jet lag in March, mm-hmm. and uh, I think. Uh, I don't want to go into too much detail, but I think the coolest thing I'm doing right now involves a liquor cabinet. I'll leave it at that. <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. Uh, Chachi is around. He he bailed on the show uh, a minute before the show. Oh, here he comes back. Here Brilliant. he comes back. Hey, well, I'm not talking to Rob. He's, he's not talking to Rob, though. This is going to be <laughs> a really interesting show. In the meantime, we do have the Hangout going on. If there's anybody joining us live, and you can do that here Every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern at live.sorgatronmedia.com. We're at awesomecast.com. We got emails at contact at awesomecast.com. AJ likes to use that one. We're also on Twitter at awesomecast. Plus, we're, you know, circle us in Google Plus. Like us on Facebook and continue to co- da, 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 da. continue the conversation, gentlemen uh, and lady. uh, Ladies. Ch- ladies. Do we have ladies now? Well, we do have ladies now. Told you, okay. ladies. And Shachi, <coughs> you're back. I, How you yes, doing? I'm back. I'm not to talking be- to Rob. Insert coin to begin dot com. Yes. I'm not talking <laughs> to Rob. Definitely not insert to begin dot com. Insert to begin dot com. Is there anything going on with that yet, Rob? No. No, it's just an email address. Oh, that's good. That's good. How you doing, Shachi? I'm well. You're what? I'm well. <laughs> We're good with the talking thing this week, I yeah, guess. Yeah, yeah. Excellent. Not Thanks. talking to Rob. Well, we do have some some people. Now, Chachi, I think, did you retweet this about the uh, the, the prescription glasses with Google Glass? I did, you because did. that was a question we brought up, that and was. someone answered it. Someone answered it? Yes. Uh, this was, uh, here, I'll bring it up here. So, so what do we have here, Chach? Uh Basically, it's a mock-up, because... You know, it's not real yet. Us nerds, mm-hmm. uh, we mm-hmm. wear glasses because we like our glasses. Well, I don't know about like required to. Well, I mean, no, you could easily switch the contacts. No, yeah, well, maybe some people can. Rob, what's stopping you from wearing contacts? Shit, I just talked to him. You did. <laughs> <laughs> I actually, I have um, a few like hundred sets of contacts that i'm not wearing what stopped you from wearing contacts um i my eyes dry out pretty easily and i don't feel like uh, putting them in in the morning also i spent i used to so what happened was i wore glasses my whole life and then i became a photographer and every time you try and use the camera it squishes your glasses up against your eyelid and it makes everything blurry so you'd have to clean your glasses every time so then i started wearing contacts then i started doing um prototyping in plastics and nasty chemical things like that, and I didn't want the contacts diffused to my eyeballs. So I switched back to glasses, and I never went back. I think that's a pretty good reason, yeah. Josh. Sorg, why don't you wear glasses? Uh, I actually uh, tried... I, no, I do wear glasses. Uh, uh, yeah, why don't I you do, wear I contacts? Do, I, do, I do wear glasses. Uh, well, actually, I went to try to get contacts at one point and kept poking myself in the eye, and then it didn't work. <laughs> exactly. I, it didn't work out for me too well. Hand-eye so. coordination in nerds is terrible. Well, it wasn't hand-eye coordination. I just didn't like touching my eye. <laughs> actually, hand-eye coordination in nerds is pretty good. Yeah, I know. Yeah, Shut yeah, up. Actually, yeah, I know. Yeah. Anyways. My hand-eye coordination so, is but awesome. They have a, they, but uh, back to the thing. But yes, we they, have... Because I prefer on. glasses. Yeah. yeah the, o- the only way I would get contacts is if I could get away with, like, I don't know, the Windows logo or, like, a power button. For per- your contacts? Yeah, prescription contacts. You know, something nerdy that would show that I'm nerdy, other than, you know, my tattoos that say, hey, I'm nerdy. I'm seeing that they have these. Oh, I, I don't know. I, have a, I It was something I thought about this morning before the show. They totally have power buttons. I don't know about anything else. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I wouldn't wear contacts unless it was something I could, like, unless it was something cool like that. You're replacing it with something cooler. Yeah. 
Yeah, okay. All right. So, I mean, I like my glasses, so I'm not about to not wear my glasses. Well, anyways. And but- so, like, a lot of things are difficult for me to do because jackass companies don't take glass wearers into consideration when they're making their products, mm-hmm. i.e., uh, 3D movie companies. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, actually... What, Rob? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not... Uh, no, I'm not sh- I know that the, the ones you get in theaters, if you get uh, the real 3D glasses, they are designed to fit over your glasses. Uh, and I know that if you get a Samsung TV that has 3D built into it, it actually has this awesome little bridge clip, so it's supposed to snap onto your glasses. Hmm. Okay, so some companies... <laughs> are taking it into consideration, but the majority of them don't. True. They just expect you to put on another pair of glasses on top of your glasses, which is completely uncomfortable. Here, I'm with Miss Bossy No Pants in the chat. I just don't like to stick my finger in my eye. Listen, if I had a good reason, I would stick my finger in my eye. I have no problem with that. I'll touch my eye right now. But it has to be a very good reason. Therefore... I'm not about to take off my glasses to wear Google Glasses. Or that second video that we showed last week of the guy walking into stuff will actually happen. I'm clumsy enough as it is. So, yes, make... I the What's that? I thought I was usually the angry one. No, I'm just... It's Chachi's turn this week. Yeah, just my turn. But, yeah, okay. I, we, we asked for an attachment. Someone made a prototype for an attachment because the majority of nerds wear glasses mm-hmm. at a preference. That's their preference. And it makes sense because when you looked at it, let me see if I can bring up the Google Glass thing. Because really, really, it was just kind of a holder. There wasn't much to it. Like, they right. had a little bit of glass over this. But if you see if, if you see from uh, what, what they have here, like, it's really that little bit of glass right at the top that's important. Like, that's where your information is going to be. Exactly. So, um... I'm trying to find the yeah the Google Glass and the Twitter because it's really account. just kind of a wireframe because they made like a glasses thing for everybody else right. that doesn't have it already right so and I'm not about to pay to get the lens made for their glasses yeah yeah when if they want me to buy their product they'll make it so I can just snap it onto the glasses I already wear Let's see if I bring this up real quick yeah because so it, it really is just kind of. Because they don't even have any glass or anything. It's just it's just kind of like just a hoarder. Yeah. So I mean I guess I guess it makes so, sense in the long run. It's also a prototype. Yeah, it's all <laughs> not that this is actually gonna happen. Like, it's not actually gonna not happen. Not. It doesn't actually exist yet. It's just a prototype. But you know. Right. You but, worry about but you, the you point keep of usability it. in mind that you can modify in the future, but for prototypes you don't really have to care. Right. Mm-hmm. But the point of it was we talked about it last week, someone made it happen. Therefore, it was needed to be talked about. There it is. Um, and the email also, I believe... <laughs> is in response to me. Yes. Uh, <laughs> it's uh, from AJ, off con- contributor to the show. Uh, when he said iPhone greater to Windows Mobile greater to Android, uh, I was referring to the OS and developers. Uh, I know uh, good and well that the hardware, L- the hardware LG Drive, a $150 prepaid Android device, was not a great example of the hardware. However, it was running a stock version of Android. My opinion is derived from my me having great frustrations with how applications are developed and how Android runs applications. I greatly dislike that I have to run a task killer app to make sure apps get closed after a while because they will kill my battery if they don't. I greatly dislike how application developers don't have constant interfa- consistent interfaces uh, that make them all a pain to use. Widgets are cool, but they lose their appeal with me rather quickly. <laughs> What's up? Nothing. Uh, Microsoft uh, seems to have hit the middle ground uh, between Android and iOS. They're going with multiple hardware vendors, but giving a very specific requirement for the hardware. Uh, they've they're giving app developers the ability to do whatever they want, but having a very tightly controlled app store. I don't know if any of the others any way to sideload apps on the Windows Phone. Uh, they have the widgets fun from Android with uh, live tiles but it's tied to an app that can provide deeper information behind the tile. Example, Carbon, a Windows Phone Twitter app, displays a number of mentions and DMs. They've done a very nice job with the OS, and I wish the device I had to try out, uh, what I had to try out with didn't have a cracked screen that almost cut me. And rebuttal. 
Yeah, yeah. It basically, I, we t- oh. he, he showed the crack on Hangout uh, uh, one Monday night. And it was just like, you know, it was a bit of a crack in it, but it was obviously enough to cut them. Uh, it, the, they sent it in an envelope. Like a brand new phone? Like, well, I, I think it was a used phone that he was sent. Like he got on eBay or wherever he got it from. Uh, but it was like, just like, you know, like the padded envelope that was sent like DVDs in. Wow. That was it. Smart. So, of course, like the, the, the glass got cut. Yeah. Got got uh, cracked. So, oh, well. Uh, was... He's right. Everything he said is right. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. So, so I'm, I'm glad he, you know, he, he uh, clarified what was going on there. So, um. He rebuttaled. So the big news this week, I, I guess this is the big news. Well, I, I, well the big news this week is NAP, uh, it, uh, amongst tech heads, at least, as far as I can see. Or at least maybe that's just me because I'm a camera guy. Um, I think it's just me. Is it just me? Just me? I'm kind of excited. I mean, Final Cut, yeah, there's stuff happening there. I mean, uh, yeah, I mean I'm mean, i is 6K, 8K. We can, oh, we, we'll talk about that maybe later. Yeah. Uh, but there's a new law called SIPA. That's with a C. Sis. CISPA? CISPA. CISPA. I don't even... But okay, uh, well, we, we we all watched the source fed to get. Well, you know, I've been hearing a little bit about it. It, it. It's not it's not like the Pippa Sopa stuff that we had before, where it would break the internet. <laughs> Basically, privacy is the concern here. Uh, what's your take on it, Rob? Uh, <laughs> so uh, what CISPA looks to do is it's all about. Um, uh, controlling privacy and stuff like that. And it enables, specifically the big concern is that it enables corporations to uh, share, uh, I forget what the exact verbiage is, but something that they feel to be relevant to the privacy or like control of privacy between individuals. And where that, it's the the problem with all of these laws, as well as right now there's an anti-bullying law that just went through Arizona. And the, the verbiage that they use in the law is really loose in which you create something that is totally, uh, uh, like, it's it's all relative to what you consider to be something that affects privacy, just as uh, in the case of the Arizona law, it, I believe it's relative, it's relative to anything you might consider to be harassment on the internet. Mm-hmm. In the case of Arizona, it attaches some ridiculous fine to anything posted on the internet that could be construed as harassment. And I mean, as far as I'm concerned, I spent like the first 10 minutes of the show harassing Chachi. So <laughs> in, her, in Arizona, I would be in deep, deep trouble. And, I, I'm not going to press charges. Oh, that's, that's good. Uh, that's good. And uh, SIPA falls into that same category. Where, when you lose, use this loose terminology to describe the sort of things that you're going to be sharing with other corporations or the government or who's going to be arrested for what. That's where you create a problem because in a society where, you know, everything becomes 10 times more complicated every single day as new iterations of things happen. I mean, to be honest, when you look at the English language and compare to the things we do every day, it hardly describes the things that we do. Like the Internet, like people say, oh, you know, the Internet won't exist in in 10 years. We won't we'll be saying what was the Internet? No, we won't. You know why? Because the Internet's a concept, not a thing. But like that's that's crazy talk. And that also the idea of applying that as a concept, not a word, is totally strange. And I might talk to somebody who says, no, the Internet is a network of computers. And I would argue that it's not. But that argument is what creates a falsehood in any law applied to the word Internet. Yeah. And plus the fact that we're still using the word cyber is kind of interesting, too. Kind of shows where they're coming from. So it stands for, I don't think we said this yet, it stands for the Cyber Intelligence Sharing and Protection Act. Uh, Basically, it, it opens up. Uh, from how it reads, it seems that any time that there is a cyber threat uh, or a threat to, uh, you know, uh, you know, private companies, I think IP is attached to this. Uh, it basically gives provisions for information to be shared amongst like ISPs and and stuff like that. And as we're seeing, it's already supported by a lot of companies that help us communicate and have a lot of our data already, like Facebook and Microsoft and Intel and uh, in a lot of other ones. Um, so it, it's just, um, yeah, like you said, it, it's just very widely written. And it sounds like basically they can just get information for whatever reason they feel like. That as long as it falls under a th- cyber crime and what and again, something that's not defined, really, that or is still finding its definition. 
So um, it, it's definitely something they're they're trying to find new protections against the guys like Anonymous, you know. Uh, and but there has to be a little bit of uh, you know MPA RAA in here, you know, wanting to you know get information to you know for their needs, you know, for intellectual property, for they, so they can overstep their bounds for however they want. But um, I don't know. What do you think, Chachi? It, it's scare tactics. That's all it is. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Don't do stupid stuff on the internet, and you have absolutely nothing to be worried about. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Well, the the problem is, like, that's I'm totally with you that you know <laughs> don't do stupid things, and you don't have to worry about doing stupid things. But the inherent problem with these really loose laws is your definition of a stupid thing might be different from theirs. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, just like I, I'm, I'm doing regular stuff that I don't think is an issue, and. Uh, well, there was there was a concern, like you know, if if I, you know, threw out a YouTube clip or something that's interpreted as an intellectual property violation, that means you know I'm liable, to, you know, fall under this, and somebody's gonna gonna proceed to get my information or whatever from you know the myriad of services that we put this show out onto or something. Um, and also, you have to take into consideration that yes, if you do something, they find reportable Mm -hmm. that's only like the first step yeah i mean who knows what will happen when they like give your information up Mm -hmm. there is a well the one thing i was uh, interesting when we're watching that source fit thing there is a a a uh, kind of a back a back end of this to defend against this right which we usually don't get in a case like this um it's just the front end stuff that's a concern for this case um you know it, it, it you know there which that's promising, but you know I don't know the legal ease. And, Wait, uh, you didn't talk about the back stuff. You mentioned it, but you didn't actually bring it up. Hmm? You said you brought it up, but you didn't actually lay it out. Uh, the back stuff being that uh, the companies can actually sue if the information is misled, misused. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so there is a provision for abuse. So, so that I mean that's that's good to see. But I, you know who knows who knows and who knows how many drafts this thing's going to go through before it does or doesn't get killed. So we'll see. We'll see. So moving on here. Um, let's see. We already talked about Google glasses here. Um, this was an interesting one that came up uh, in this past week. Chicago police exploit social media. to crack down on delicious food trucks was the headline uh, coming from the verge. Um, apparently, apparently they were using, uh, the, the, so, you know, well, we have food trucks in here in Pittsburgh. I know I, I, I don't get to participate in them too often, but I know like, you know, we don't really have food trucks here. What, what do you have here? Well, what do you have here? We have, <laughs> I'm in Beachview. I have the Crested they, Duck on the top of the There's one food truck. Is it, is it really? Yeah. Which food truck are you referring to? Oh, no, there's two. I'm sorry. There's two food trucks. Okay. Um, there's... There's the hot dog one. Frank Frank Shuary. Shuary, yeah, not that's actually it. a food truck. What's the other one? How is that not actually a food truck? Stop. Oh, oh, <laughs> oh no. Now, now, what is our loose definition of a yes. food truck? What is your loose... No, 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 no. Okay, so uh, <laughs> if you are familiar at all with uh, food truck laws and uh, U.S. Uh, not U.S. Uh, Pitts, uh, uh, Allegheny County um, food uh, sanitation laws in Pittsburgh, you'd know, you'll know that there are like extreme like costs involved in getting what would we consider to be a legitimate food truck and what the rest of the United States calls a food truck, which is a truck that drives around and serves food. But the Frank Shuary actually does. And I know this because we hire them the first Friday of every month is they are hired to go to a, a parking lot owned by another individual. So it's not public property. Oh, okay. okay. And what about the, uh, so that means that dessert one is, under the city truck thing. is yeah. pretty much the same deal except um, for i i know on several occasions they have parked on public property yeah i think i think they've tried to do the legitimate food truck thing which honestly is probably why they're not doing too well because mm. there's actually there's uh the bracero the bracero grill also has a taco truck but it's the same thing the frank Shuri does where like you can call them and ha- it's sort of like hired catering out of a truck well, in Chicago, okay. they're having some issues. Well, apparently they they, they found, according to the Chicago Sometimes, 
Uh, several truck operators had reported a surge in ticketing and fines over the past month, uh, with claiming that police showed up uh, within just minutes of their arrival. It led some to conclude that authorities are tracking the city's trucks on Facebook and Twitter, which, as you know, we see with the ones here, they announce where they're going to be. That's how people are going to find them and know to go and, and everything. Mm -hmm. so, uh, so, so social media is working back against them. So, um, including <laughs> the, the, the duck and roll truck, for the instance. Hey, I, I want to know what a duck and duck and roll duck and roll duck and roll. It, it's probably is it a, is it a duck? No, it's like, probably it, like an egg roll type. I don't know. That's the way. That's the one I'm picturing. It like an egg roll dumpling type <laughs> food service. Hmm. Or it's. Wraps and basically, I, it, it doesn't look like they're duck. getting these trucks for like being unlicensed or anything like this. Uh, they're, they're, no, they're, and I, the fact that this story is in here is my little peeve of the week. Like, you know how Rob usually goes off on a tangent? This because, one's yours <laughs> because people are stupid and should understand the internet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is this is my my peeve of the week. Okay, I, I'm stealing it from Rob because it, it was a slow if news you, week. If though. you read the story, mm -hmm. it says. That the people were ticketed for being in an illegal parking area, mm -hmm. or which is looks like it's two hundred feet within a brick and mortar. That's another. Uh, that's another store. one of the yeah. rules. Yeah. So if they weren't breaking these rules, they wouldn't have gotten a ticket. <laughs> and they're telling everybody where they're at on social media. Exactly. So of course, they're like, "Okay, let's go." See you know how you fix that? Are doing. What? You throw a bell on your truck and you roll down the street, ringing it. That Baltimore, they do that exactly. Baltimore, they you do just that. flag them down and buy your 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 and then duck and your then, duck wrap. And, and then ladies move. get out of the truck and they they want you to take like free samples of the donuts and baked goods and stuff going on. Really? It was really weird. I thought I was involved in something different, something illegal. Illegal. Were you buying drugs? Like, why are you pushing truck? these baked goods on me? Why? Why? And why is the first one free? But really? yeah, uh, just like Rob usually says, don't be stupid. <laughs> <laughs> and you won't get a ticket. That's all there is to it. I mean, follow the laws. You you were obviously given a copy of the laws when you signed up for the food truck permit mm -hmm. and got all the clearances and everything. So why why say that you're being? Uh, it, it says in here uh, you can't take you can't get me for premeditated selling of a cupcake. Yes, they can. If yeah. you're if you're breaking the parking law, that's a ticket or cupcake laws. No, it's a parking law at that point. Okay. All right. And well, the other news. Now I've been hearing this. This is the first I actually looked at because I've been hearing about it all weekend. And and I, you know, who who knows? I, I didn't know uh, what all went into this before uh, we pulled this up. But Tupac's got Tupac is back, guys. <laughs> my favorite my favorite quote from all of this is. My theory is that Tupac was a hologram the whole time. <laughs> That's a good one. That's a good one. Uh, you played at Coachella. <laughs> yes. Where, where's Coachella? Is that uh, Chicago? In Chicago. Illinois? Okay. Am I right? Yeah. I think so. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's in. Oddly, Illinois. where the food truck yeah. stuff was. So there's a little. Here's a little bit of a YouTube video from it. Um, and he was a three. You'll see a uh, different shots here if you're on. Hang video. on. What's up? Hang on. Uh, Rob is at the Empire Polo Club in Indio, California. Oh, oh, this is at a polo club. Oh no, it, it's never mind. I got my two festivals mixed up. Okay, I'm sorry, it's the Palooza that's in Illinois. Okay, okay, I believe one of the music festivals is in Illinois. Rob, don't judge me. I see your judging face. <laughs> <laughs> wow, I'm googling it. Anyways. So holograms, guys, and he played live with what with Snoop Dogg and uh, and Dr. Dre and Dr. Dre here well, on stage. Th they were headlining, yeah. so I mean they got the most time, mm -hmm. and both of them are old, <laughs> so they can't perform like they used to. And so, knowing them, they were both stoned out of their gourds. So they both relegated to light tricks. Well, light tricks and lots of special guests. Yeah, yeah. So. Um, and as you see, if you're on video or yes, or find it is us on YouTube. it is the Palooza that takes place in Chicago. <laughs> <laughs> if you if you look at this, uh, it, it, you actually do see something different from different angles. Oh, it's amazing! It, the hologram is so detailed that in the beginning of the vi video, you can see his thug life tattoo on his 
on his abs. Yes, because they. Oh yeah, yeah. It's it's. Uh, I mean, it's, it's, it's extremely well done, and I mean. So you the want ex- the uh, you want the inside scoop on not that? Not Not yet. And, and yes. with the exception of the fact that the other performers had to be completely dark in order for this to work, mm-hmm. it's a genius idea. Yeah, you start to see a little bit there where there's a little bit of a Princess Leia effect in comparison. Right. So. Okay, Rob, hit us with the deets. All right, so uh, the way this hologram is done, uh, the first tidbit of information you need to know is that the 3D modeling uh, was done by Digital Domain. Mm-hmm. Uh, same guys who did uh, Jeff Bridges and Tron and did all the effects for the Pirates of the Caribbean. Okay. Uh, they took all of the photographs and things that we have of Tupac and generated a 3D model out of it. And then what they did is what's called a Pepper's Ghost Effect, which is something that's been around since the 1860s, <laughs> um, which is a stage effect, which basically you have um, a plate glass and some special lighting uh, to make things appear and disappear. And you basically you create sort of like a fake room and then a real room, uh, and there's different ways to play with the light. Basically, when you apply light to things in the fake room, it makes them appear inside the real room as this weird, like, cordoned-off reflected section. What made this possible for Coachella is something that is called Emusion Eyeliner. Um, they probably use the Emusion Eyeliner product or something very similar to it. It's more like a uh, what you might call like a scrim uh, or like a, a super lightweight uh, mesh fabric uh, and the way they do it in the stage way is they stretch this thing across the stage at a 45 degree angle and then project on it from below, uh, which is what gives you this really interesting like ghost effect and how they can have other people on stage with him and also have this like uh, the Mujin eyeliner is what lets him move completely across the stage because it's uh, such a thin uh, film that's super strong. You don't have to put any seams in it and it can be really, really super long. And uh, that's about it. So it's essentially, actually, they um, it's also been used for. Uh, I know the gorillas have used it. Um, yeah, I, I was just wondering because that sounds like what what they've used here. And there's a little bit of the gorillas when they did their live stuff. Yeah, yeah, so. the gorillas definitely use it for their live stuff to make it look like the cartoon characters are actually dancing on stage. Um, for, uh, Frank Sinatra has been recreated with it. Uh, Toyota's used it for a bunch of stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, Apparently, Hatsune Miku, if you're into that. I don't know who that is. But, uh, yeah, that's the word. So, essentially, uh, uh, the two major things that they have to to worry about in this situation is, A, lighting. Mm -hmm. um, Because, as with any projector, if it's too bright, you're not going to see it. Mm -hmm. Am I correct, Rob? Uh, Yes. And you have to make sure that the performers on stage don't walk in front of the projection. Yes. So, I mean, if if Snoop really wanted to, he could have reached through Tupac. Well, what? actually, he couldn't have reached through Tupac. He no. would have been punching a screen. Oh, okay. So there was... So the thing sure, to understand about this is I'm that sure Tupac's could have, image was projected... Right, on, it was projected on, at a 45-degree angle. Right, but upward. on, like, a piece of film. So if he had tried to reach through the hologram, he would have pushed onto the... Th- there's actually something physically there. Okay, yeah. okay. Wow. Wow. So how do you guys feel about like somebody being recreated? It, it wasn't it I heard that this was not a song that he actually did. Like that he did not perform this when he was He might not when have he perf- was alive. He what, might what, what, not what have it? performed it when he was alive. Okay. It was a recorded song because obviously they can't make the dude record something new now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But like, but then he's also saying stuff like that wasn't like. Well, child, yeah, like, I know, mean, you child, can, you can say, program hey, that stuff. Okay, okay. I mean, and which is this is the first time we've we've seen no, them do that with that with old actors, right? Uh, to where they've, they've regenerated stuff, stuff like that. So that part is a new with it. Was creepy. I think it's awesome. Uh, I mean, I, I've seen videos where people are saying that uh, there's a it's slight. Mm-hmm. But I mean, the stuff that they could do with this mm-hmm. is, is limitless. Fun you could see Nirvana. Well, yeah, I mean, Ooh. this is if they if they wanted to do this. I mean, you could see Nirvana. A new generation could see Jimi Hendrix. Mm-hmm. But nobody will pay for that, right? I know. <laughs> well, no, I mean, it wouldn't be. It wouldn't cost as much as like you you would pay to go see, uh, like, a real group perform. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, the, the question... Mean, 
Well, I don't know. Everybody, everybody went and paid for the gorillas. How, at what point does hologram technology, quote unquote hologram technology, which this isn't really hologram technology, but there is blah, 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 that does exist. <laughs> but at what point does that get good enough that people stop paying money to see artists live and they pay money to see the hologram? Mm-hmm. At what point does that make sense? Uh, when it happens in my living room on my couch. I don't want anybody performing on my couch. That'd be well, not on my awkward. couch, but I mean, me <laughs> sitting on my couch with them performing where my TV would go. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's what we're kind of looking at. Is this this becoming like eventually something like this becomes your TV? Potentially. I mean, hell, we had we had holograms back in the day. Anybody remember uh, what was it? Time time traveler or something like that. Those little holograms. They did a, a Dragon Slayer one. That was a holograms. In the arcade? Nobody? Nobody. I'm yeah. the only one that remembers this. Okay. Moving on. All right. All right. I think uh, right now the closest thing to legitimate hologram technology is uh, Philips has something that uh, is, it's a holographic display, so it is contained in a little case, but they use it, I've seen it in person a few times as a prototype, um, and it's really impressive. If you could imagine um, basically a clear cylinder with a base at the bottom that the thing sits on, and then like a black cap at the top, and you can walk around it at any angle, and it's as if you're walking around it. Well, mm. what technology did they use last year for the election? Or, not last year, but for the last presidential election with Will I Am? Uh, I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, I don't know the Will I Am stuff. Oh, let me. I, I, I know uh, people have mentioned it, but I haven't. Hold on. I do remember, I mean, I remember like the CNN stuff. Where they would beam somebody in, but but that can be done with cameras. I don't think it was actually there, maybe. Hold but. on. I'm looking it up. I'll figure this out. Go on. I'll interrupt you. <laughs> As you do. It was, was it... Wh- it was where, a Will I Am hologram on CNN. Is, Is that what you're it? talking about? Yeah. Okay. Hold on. Let me let me pull this up here. <coughs> see what we got. Uh, and this was... Uh, yeah, this is the last elections. Let's oh, see. there we go. They beamed him in. No, this is all cameras, I think. Yeah, this is... Yeah. Yeah, he's in, like, a room somewhere, green screened, and they beam it out, and it, it was... Yeah, there's, like, they, a really weird now. They explained this uh, at one point, and it was like, really? That's not terribly exciting. And yeah. uh, knows how flat he looks and everything, so... Yeah. Uh, this, this is what you're talking about? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. It's along the same lines. And, and I think what ends up happening is you like you, you if you're on video, you saw there was a little bit of the camera movement and you saw like it turning with Willingham. I think that's like a synchronized camera movement, like, you know, there and wherever he is. So, I mean, that is it's just some really interesting trickery at that point. So but still, <laughs> I, I love it does say will I am via hologram under the title. Yes. So <laughs> thank you, CNN. Thank you for bringing technology to whatever it is you do over there. Um, some other stories here. Oh, what like, news? You know, you know, on entertainment side. Okay, um, the the big stuff coming out of NAB. A lot of little geeky things. There's some uh, updates coming for uh, Final Cut for Nerd. support and uh, and and the updates. It looks like the updates to Final Cut uh, Pro X are going to be rolled in because there's really no upgrade upgrade model in the App Store. Nerd. Which, like, you know, we've noticed with, like, iPhone apps, I mean, or anything like that. Um, but uh, the big push has been for 8K, I believe we're up to now. Uh, really? What's that? Are we pushing 8K at this point? There's a 6K. It's ridiculous. It, it, well, it, I know. It, there's more Ks. Uh, so Canon just came out with a cinema, like, dedicated cinema camera, and I know that's pushing 4K. Okay. I know for I think it, what it is is that because uh, I think red is the only 8K camera still. Is that true? You know? Yeah, I, I think that's the one they've been ta- they've been talking about a lot. But I think at this point the problem is that nobody has a display that can run 4K. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, but all of the cameras are now shooting in 4K. And, and well, even, and, and even with this other stuff, it, you know, it, it's going to be even longer until we get like a 6K 8K 8K display. But we have the cameras to shoot them now. But. Um, but what difference is, you know, is this future proofing your stuff at this point? Future proofing. What if you can afford something like that? Which I guess, you know, in, in in the long run, Reds are pretty affordable for what they do. Yeah, I mean, comparatively to how much money you'd be spending on the high-end video camera of yesteryear, 
all of this stuff is incredibly affordable, like, you know, inflation included. Um, it makes, and it does make a lot of sense to shoot your stuff, like something else to consider when you're shooting um, 4K. Uh, if you're familiar with any sort of digital manipulation work, the more pixels you have means the more pixels you have to manipulate to downsample into something else. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. if I have even a, an HD signal that I'm going to work on, say I have 1080p, I'm going to work on that and do all kinds of nasty stuff to it. If I am now displaying that on a 720 display, all of the nasty things I do will suddenly look a little bit better just because the quality isn't as high as it was shot. So when you shoot in 4K, if you're shooting in 4K, processing in 4K, and then dumping down to 1080p, which is what most people are doing these days, you can you can do some really like severe pe like pixel damage and stressing and crazy stuff to create some awesome effects that you could not do before because you like if you shoot in 1080p and you need to display in 1080p you don't get that like stepping down to like make things mm -hmm. look better mm -hmm. exactly um and a lot of discussions were about exactly that about about shooting in certain lighting and you get a little bit of grain effect but if you knock it down to 1080p from a 4k 8k whatever um you know then that that kind of comes together and smooths it back over and lo still looks amazing on your 1080p um but uh, the the other thing was the idea of when you film like an interview or something, you don't have to worry about framing as much because you can oh just, yeah because you can also crop yeah it. you can just crop it right out and, and nobody will notice nobody will be the wiser so you can just be like yeah just go wide on this and if I want a close up boom I'm a close up nobody notices you don't need a second camera anything like that like I try to pull that trick sometimes you know shooting standard definition. Uh, widescreen and it's a little bit questionable you know or you, or if you shoot everything but with the same technique if you're shooting everything 720 1080 but you're shooting it to like the internet or or dvd which is you know frankly it's what a lot of people still have uh you know you can get away with it same same concept for the most part so definitely definitely it, 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 it is funny i is there even a projection on how soon we're going to get 4k displays like this Five years? Um, the thing is that 4K displays are something that you could get if it made any sense. <laughs> well, there's no content for it. Yeah, the, well, there's no content for it, and it doesn't make sense yet. It's one of those things like, uh, so we have the MP3 file compression format. And if you're an audio file, you understand that the MP3 audio compression is awful compared to like what you get on a CD. Yeah. As far as getting your high on your low end as well as your middle. When you go into MP3, you're basically just getting a crunch down version of the middle and the, you miss all of the very like the nuances of the highs and the lows. But at the same time, you, the average person doesn't perceive this kind of thing. Sort of like uh, back when the wax cylinder was first invented by I think that was an Edison thing. Um, that was an Edison joint. <laughs> <You're not laughs> um so when wax cylinder was first invented, they, they did this test in which they got a crowd full of people into a room and they closed the curtain on the stage and they played the wax cylinder back from behind the curtain. And everybody in the room thought that there was a full symphony orchestra behind that curtain. Hmm. That idea sounds completely ridiculous compared to what we're used to now, but it's a generational like evolution in your perception of things. So now we know like, if any of us heard a wax cylinder, it would sound terrible, but it's just we're used to this quality. So nowadays, everybody is used to, like, the most audio you grew up with, uh, at least our generation, is probably everything you heard on TV and everything you heard on the radio, slowly followed by compressed media on whatever you could download on the Internet. And at that time, the Internet is not broadband, so you're getting, like, you're either waiting an hour to get a WAV file or you're getting an MP3 file that's been compressed, so everybody's used to this this level of quality so the question mm -hmm. is not when is 4k available it's when does it make sense if ever for our taste to go up to this higher level of content because if you wanted to you can get a flak file you can get yeah. an aac file yeah but nobody like it hasn't made sense for the last five years and mp3 certainly been, been around that whole time so it might be that 4k is just you know what you process in and what the nerds really like but it never actually sees the light of day as far as the average consumer is concerned. Exactly. It's it, it just a, 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 another tool, you know? Yeah, um, certainly. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Well, it's like, you know, you, 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 you take your photos and, and when, where, how do people usually see them? 
you know. Right. I, everybody, like, for instance, when I shoot on my camera, I have, like, a 12 megapixel uh, DSLR. When I shoot on my camera, it's 12 megapixels, and I save the file to the car as a raw file so I can manipulate all those pixels as much as I want. And then when I'm posting them up on Flickr, it's a 700 by, well, 700 max width and 72 DPI. So it's going from 12 megapixels at 240 DPI down to this little tiny thing. If I can roll back to the holograms for a second, guys, uh, so nobody thinks I'm completely crazy. This was Time Traveler. This was my first experience with holograms. Still going to think you're crazy. Yep. Yes. It was basically those Laserdisc games. It just was projected uh, in a cool little cabinet they had going on there. There it is. Wow. Yep. And like I said, they did like a Dragon's Lair version of this too. So, <laughs> man, laser disc, full motion video, 90s, you were so kind to us. CDI, <laughs> 3DO, all good stuff. Mad Dog McCree. Uh, and it does look like Sony was one that uh, uh, unleashed a 8K uh, camera. So, I mean, I think this was, I think it was just going around a bit more. Uh, than just just red putting out the cameras, the, the new cameras. So, um, so I, I won't be listening to that throughout the next little bit, rest of the week. I'm sure there's a lot of stuff to entertain me, but none of you. Uh, <laughs> so we'll kind of go with that. Boom, yeah, burn. Yeah. Well, uh, okay, nerd. What? It's my job. It's my job to look at cameras that I'll never afford. Um, anyways, so uh, this was interesting. Uh, Remember when Hulu Plus came out? We, were we like really questionable about who would pay eight bucks for that thing? Mm. I mean, well, that was the general consensus, right? You know, I recently found out, not that I would encourage this, but I recently found out, not that I would encourage this either, um, <laughs> that much like in the way that if you were to, not that I encourage this, share your Netflix login with somebody else, which I would never encourage you to do, <laughs> that works. Yes. Uh, as it does with, not that I would ever encourage this, but HBO Go. Yes. Um, apparently, it also works with Hulu Plus. Not that I'm telling you to do this. Yeah, well, that, well, I was asking the question several weeks ago. What keeps you from passing around your HBO Go? What keeps me from saying, Dad, here's like some money for HBO. You know, I want it. You know, what? 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 Now, I know Netflix was doing a campaign for a little bit, discouraging you from sharing that. And like I said, and they do kind of. Uh, you know, if you pass around too too much, I think they only activate about five devices at a time, but then it'll deactivate stuff through, so it'll start getting annoying if you, like, pass your password out to ten different people. But, yeah, I mean, and it's also... Well, yeah, if you get stupid with it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, I feel like the amount of money it would cost to police this sort of stuff mm -hmm. does not match up with the amount of money they're theoretically losing on the people who are doing this. This probably happens a lot, too. I mean, really, you got to think about it. That, it's too easy. It's, it really is too easy. I don't think it happens that often. No? Think about, like, so the average Netflix user is not necessarily the nerdy type is the first thing that's, like, super important in this, mm -hmm. which means that the average person is going to assume that they cannot share this or also be the, you know, I'm terrified of using the Internet for secret things uh, portion of people who would be afraid of generally giving a password to an account to somebody. Yeah, yeah. Well, because you, you would have access to all the billing information if you did that. Right, um, exactly. Also, I, I would want to think, um, I think a lot of people, when they deal with something like television like this, I think they're already scared straight about all the cable stealing stuff, and the scramblers right. and all that kind of stuff that's happened over the last 20 years. Yeah, so, so this I, is probably more of a generational thing. So mm -hmm. like the current generation of average swath of users, it doesn't make any sense to produce, but the Netflix of of tomorrow, the Netflix for the kids that are growing up, like as we speak, mm -hmm. it's certainly going to be a concern because they're all going to want to share their logins with their friends because we will have a new definition of privacy and a new definition of content sharing and publishing. And all that. Then you're going to start seeing something like Steam started doing this. I, I think it was a similar problem with Steam. So we've done that before. I've, I've dropped Chachi my my account to go check out a game. No, you haven't because we don't condone that activity. I there's nothing wrong with sharing. It's, it's like passing you a copy. It's just like, it's here, try this game out. It's a violation of the service agreement, Michael Sorg. Other it than is. the terms of service thing. Um, and we did no such thing. And same I, with my brother. Same. Innocent, innocent. I'm innocent. <laughs> I never used his account. But now, every time I want to log in on a Steam on a different computer of my own computers, I, it says, hey, we sent you an email. Go plug this code in. So that becomes a little problematic. So I wonder if at a certain point when this does become an issue... 
after they've been, you know, along for so long and more people figure this out, are we going to start seeing uh, some traps like that for Hulu, Netflix, HBO Go? Nope. Nope. There's a difference. Okay. What's the difference? Steam's more expensive. Okay. Okay. That company loses more money if you're passing around your account. That's true. That's true. Also, for Steam, you're buying a license for that material. Mm -hmm. For Netflix, you're not. And that's a non-transferable versus something like Netflix, Hulu. That is a subscription. Yeah. That is a you pay to play. Well, to be fair, the the way the Netflix thing works is every time you hit play, you have temporarily purchased a license for that content. Okay. Fine. You, you've temporarily purchased the license for that movie. That's okay. I can concede I to that. that. However, when you buy something on Steam, mm-hmm. that's yours. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. if you wipe your your computer and you reinstall Steam, yeah, all is, that stuff is still there. Which is a service they provide that the, right. the ability to have that access to do that. Right. Yeah, which is great because, you know, I, I, I... They can't take that away from you. It's simple enough that, you know, you get a new laptop, let's toss the game on there. Okay, here we go, you know. Right. Or I have several laptops, some that are, like, older, and I can put some of the older games I bought on there. Log in, here they go. That's that's the difference between Steam, Netflix, and Hulu Plus. It Netflix just gets a, and Hulu Plus can at any time, and do at any time, mm-hmm. remove or upload content. Yeah. Steam can't. Well, I mean, they can upload new content, but theoretically, they can't take something down because you've bought that game. That is your copy of the game. That's why it's different. Good point. Good they, point. they lose more money if you share your account, which we've never done. Well, there are 2 million people that are paying for Hulu Plus accounts and maybe sharing them wildly, but still. Um... So Hulu Plus doing pretty well. And we talked about before about like series being on here and doing well, and they're actually considering them for redevelopment, we're making new episodes of stuff that have been canceled, kind of like the uh, you know Futurama Family Guy effect. So I, it's uh, and I've been enjoying it. I, I I you know I still think it's 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 the the way to go. Um, I had a visit the other day, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. You probably saw this on Twitter. Um, is it Chris Hansen? Did Chris no, Hansen it was not Chris it? Hansen. Uh, it was an Xfinity salesman came to my door. Oh, wow. Yes. Yes. Um, I presume this is the guy that if he knocks on the door and I've gotten the, you know, the little hanger thing on your door. Comcast Xfinity for those not, not in the area. Um, so I, I, I saw his shirt, said Xfinity. <laughs> and it's like, you know, I really don't have any interest in getting cable again. Not Comcast. I have no interest in getting cable again. And he's like, well, you know, oh, why? I was like, well, you know, I've you know had you guys, had Dish, had, had Fios, and now I have the internet and I have Netflix and Hulu. I don't need anything else. And he asked what I, what I use for internet. I told him Fios. I told him I'd pay for that. 65 bucks for 25 up and down. He started giving me an offer. I was like, no, I will never have Comcast for internet again because you were horrible when I had you for years. So uh, I, th- I didn't think I was too much of a dick about it. You were. I don't know. I'm sure to him I was. You were an but, asshole. But then, but then this inter- interesting conversation happened on Facebook. Uh, somebody that apparently had, had worked with Comcast uh, with that aspect of door-to-door salesmanship where there would be some and then somebody who had one i think it was mindy Min, if i'm not uh mistaken um said somebody came to her door a uh, guy and a girl older guy and a, and a girl which presuming was being trained or something uh she said she didn't she wasn't interested in the service asked if the husband was home for a final answer Ooh. <laughs> yeah. oh yeah what decade are we living in uh, uh so that was interesting you so, gotta love it yeah yeah um but yeah it, 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 that's, that's, and i wonder how many people you know obviously there's a lot of people on, on hulu plus netflix and everything how many people are are still uh doing this alongside their cable subscription really you think about it like how much how much is a dvr service Fifteen dollars a month, yeah, and drop an eight to get basically the same thing yeah. for the most part. Yeah. It, 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 and like I said, it, and Missy still calls it her. D, you know what's on the DVR whenever we bring it up. We haven't had a DVR for like five years. Sure, and also what we're tra- starting to see is people who have been unplugged from the idea of TV for so long. So like you know, 
my beef against Netflix and Hulu Plus and all this stuff is that the good stuff that I was used to getting on TV or HBO or whatever, like, was just generally unavailable to no fault of Netflix or Hulu. I understand that. But, like, a general low quality of content. What we're starting to see is, uh, like, a shift of that content to these services. And also, if you don't, if, if you can unplug for long enough, you get used to that change. It's that whole change of bad Windows XP was terrible thing that we have to always talk about. <laughs> so now there's more people. Like, certainly the kids of today are like, they're plugging into Netflix. That's what they're used to. What can they complain about? Mm -hmm. They don't know anything different. Exactly, exactly. I, I was at a, uh, an old friend's house from from uh, the Art Institute. And, and, and they have a PlayStation 3 hooked up. And, and the PlayStation 3 has the Just Kids channel. And if, you know, the kids are used to hitting yo gabba gabba whenever they want you know versus waiting for whatever is on like we used to like you know five o'clock every day for my he-man and ninja turtles fix you know i mean that's you're not trained to do that what did i do on saturday mornings i got up early on saturday mornings so i could catch my cartoons you know i mean how many of us did that 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 doesn't happen anymore time, time shifting just doesn't happen you know i don't have to make an appointment to see tv anymore for the most part except for those except for sports and that's that's about it. Sports, or if you're in American Idol or The Voice or something like that. So, so yeah. Um, and I got one more story here. This was a uh, uh, dropped on the Google Plus by uh, Nero on Twitter, Matt Weller, uh, another uh, often contributor to the show. Uh, iPads drive ninety percent of March mobile revenue, according Wise. to the Portland Business Journal. Prove it. Uh, well, well, they they have numbers here, to, <laughs> Joshi. Don't worry about Prove it. Prove it. Presuming they're not fibbing. Um, so uh, that that is kind of that is kind of crazy, though. I mean, with all all the people with iPhones and Android and everything like that for mobile, but I guess there's a lot of new iPad users with the new release that are downloading a bunch of new stuff. So. Yeah, I mean it, it's a it's a tidal wave that always kind of comes and goes with mm -hmm. every new release of an iPad or iPhone. So like it's relevant now, but that statistic will probably change in the next uh, six months, maybe. Well, actually, uh, we're expecting a new iPhone in June, so this might just be like the year of Apple Mobile Kingdom. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, if nothing else is going to step up with this, um, you know, then there's the rumors. Ugh. I don't even want to get into that one. Okay, there's going to be a smaller iPad. Okay, we get it. Who cares? Um, <laughs> but yeah, and like I said, if you spent like $500 to $800 on an iPad, you probably have money to burn. And it's a lot easier. Like you can go on Amazon. You can, you know, you can do that a lot easier than, than phones and everything. Although I've been purchasing some Amazon stuff on my phone lately. It's been an interesting experience. Um but uh, <laughs> shoppers who used iPads averaged fifty two sixty six per item, while desktop shoppers spent an average of twenty one eighty six per item. Also, I bet it's because it's easier on a desktop to go to other sites and shop around. True fact. There you go. So <laughs> there you go. Um, on that note, that's all yeah, I got. I did, I did actually, uh, real mm -hmm. quick, I did. There was another statistic. I don't know where it was from, but uh, uh, people who use an iPad to shop are like 60% more likely to buy the item they're looking at. Because they don't want to go anywhere else. <laughs> well, that, so, because it's, it's so, harder to comparison. So shop, it's the think. inconvenience factor that, that has led to people spending more money on the iPad? <laughs> yeah. Because, yeah. I mean, what, what we were talking about, like, how many times we were talking about, like, you know, our, our grandparents or our parents should just have an iPad instead of a desktop. Well, maybe this wasn't such a great idea. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's, it's something that, like, tab browsing on the iPad is a big deal for me, but it's still something to get used to. Mm -hmm. But again, it's that change is bad thing. If you grow up with an iPad, it's going to be no big deal. But I don't think the facilities for the sort of crazy 57 tab comparison shopping that some of us are used to doing is there. Every time I see a little kid being handed uh, their, their father's iPhone to play a racing game that, that uh, you know, to, to settle them down, uh, it's just like I see it coming, you know. That kid's gonna. That kid is gonna find the deals on his iPad <laughs> in our ten years, fifteen years, because he knows that. Because that's what he knows, you know. So, well, at that point, 
Guys, we're going to be at the Pits. Well, I'm going to be at the Pittsburgh Comic Con this week. Uh, we are going to have a booth for Sorgatron Media. I'll be wrestling. Uh, I'll be wrestling. I'll be selling some wrestling DVDs. Uh, we'll have some baked goods if you sign up to our mailing list, which we'll be doing some stuff with our mailing list hopefully soon. Uh, and everything like that. Come by, say hi, talk tech, talk wrestling with us. Uh, we'll be over by the women's bathroom. There you go. So it'll be <laughs> easy to find. Um, so go find out. There's uh, some more stuff going on. Uh, our friends over at Comic Book Pit are going to be having a live recording uh, with us at the booth. And uh, we're also going to be doing a live thing. Something with the Wrestling Mayhem show. Because they'll be there. Why not? There's, there's got to be other wrestling stuff there, right? It's Comic-Con. It makes sense. And we're all geeks. So that all works out. So uh, so join us this weekend. PittsburghComicCon.com. That's with one C. It's all one word. Is Comic-Con, apparently, in Pittsburgh. I don't know how that happens. But that's how this one is. Uh, Stan Lee's going to be there, so that's going to be fun. Um, I'm telling you, he's following me wherever I go. Um, so, uh, so go check that out. And we have a list of everything else going on over at SorgatronMedia.com. Go check us, check us out at AwesomeCast.com for more information, uh, past episodes, and all that kind of stuff. Uh, contact at AwesomeCast.com. Twitter at AwesomeCast. We're on Facebook. We're on Google+. Come hang out with us. And uh, and all that. So, uh, uh, Rob, what do you got going on? Uh, um, you're, you're, you're just recovering. You're chilling. You're enjoying the, the weather. Yeah, I am enjoying the weather. You know, I'm going to complain about the weather for a minute. It's supposed to be really nice. And then Saturday, Sunday, it's supposed to be like 50 cold, rainy and miserable. That's OK. I'll be inside a convention center that smells like nerd funk. Yeah, you. <laughs> Right. So yeah, I'm not. I'm building a liquor cabinet, but I don't know. <laughs> Let's know how that goes. Chaji, what up? Insert coin to begin. dot com. Yes, we he's have, doing video game things. We have new stuff every day. He hates pinball. I don't hate pinball. You're not just, good at I'm pinball. I'm just not good at pinball. Okay. I just, I, I just wanted to let you know that apparently, I know. right in our backyard is a pinball championship the other day. I knew that. And and we should say hi. We should. To the, to the pinballers. Eh. So. Pinball eh. is not really a video game. Oh, there we go. Well, it's not a video game, but it is a game. Right, it's not a video game. Mm -hmm. uh, Although. What up? Um, the Terminator 2 Judgment Day video game, or the Terminator 2 Judgment Day pinball game uh, integrates a video game into the, the score display. Yes, yeah. they do. Yeah, it does. It, that's, it, there's like a certain point where if you hit the right things, you can uh, kill. Oh, what the hell? This promo video is BS. <laughs> using the, the flippy pads and you can see like the little guys coming across the screen. Yeah, they, they started getting interesting. Like, and also, also had holograms in some of those. Yes, they fake, wow. fake, fake holograms. You almost said fake. Yes. Bottom. There you go. There, There's what you're talking about. Fake right bottom. Is that is that the right one? Um, yeah, it is. We have that in my <laughs> studio. Really? And there's, yeah. That's awesome. That's awesome. Something else I'm working on is refurbishing that, that pinball machine. Nice. Awesome. Uh, and, and, and yeah, and I got stuff going on. I'm at uh, Sorgatron.com, MikeSorg.com, so check out all that. Thanks to our awesome chat room. They've been rocking all night. Tupac Pinball. There's a call for Tupac Pinball going on out there. Um... So thanks to our awesome chat room. You've been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. Awesome. We're getting awesome. Yeah.